What is up my dudes? Cheap bastard talking to ya. For this Christmas special episode I have prepared a really useful and exciting video for you people. Here's how you can buy a CPU as powerful as an i7-4790 for only 30 euros or 33 dollars, depending on where you live. Step 1. Open your browser. Step 2. Delete your previous search history, just in case. Step 3. Go to eBay or AliExpress. Step 4. Write Xeon E5-1620 in the search bar. Step. Brother, I'm lost. What do you mean you're lost, Sarah? Five. No scope that order now button and wait for your CPU to arrive. And here's how you get that cheap CPU I'm talking about. Okay, let's talk about the specs now. Intel Xeon E5-1620, which has 4 cores and 8 threads, just like an i7, same base clock, a little bit more cache and a bit lower turbo boost clock. But remember, this Xeon supports ECC RAM, which are more cheaper to buy. Motherboards for i7 and Xeon cost pretty much the same. Let's jump into testing. By the way, all tests been done on Sapphire RX 580 8GB Nitro Plus. To start today's benchmarks, I chose Plants vs Zombies Battle for Neighbor Will. In order to save your time, I will display FPS results on the screen instead of telling them all the time. As you can see, i7 got a slightly higher average, but minimum FPS was higher on Xeon. Overall, Xeon got more consistent frame rates throughout the gameplay and i7 went like a roller coaster. The next game I tested is GTA 5. On 1080p very high settings, i7-4790 got an insane average, crushing Xeon. But maybe that was the case of highway driving in the countryside and highway driving near Los Santos. Anyways, again, Xeon got much more stable and consistent FPS while i7 was continuing its roller coaster ride. On Rocket League things were upside down. On 1080p Ultra, i7 got a higher average, a higher minimum and pretty much the same maximum FPS score. Honestly, while playing the game I couldn't tell the difference, but numbers clearly favor my i7 this time. Just Cause 3 shows the same scenario that happened on Rocket League. On 1080p Ultra, i7 got noticeably higher average and minimum score, while Xeon's in-game frame rate was going crazy like my heartbeat when my crush wrote me hey in the DMs. Moving on to CSGO, we have a very similar results here. On 1080p very high, both CPUs got pretty much identical minimum and maximum FPS, but an i7 pulled up ahead with a higher average score. Rise of the Tomb Raider switched things up again. 1080p Ultra gave Xeon an edge. It beat i7-4790 in every category possible and delivered a much smoother experience throughout, without any problems or frame drops. Protecting you from overwatching this video, the time has come for the final game. In the final benchmarking battle on 1080p ultimate settings, the winner is Right after today's sponsor, Ruggable. Hehe, <laughs> just kidding. The winner is a Xeon again. It performed better in every segment than its competitor and proved itself that the higher price for the i7-4790 is not justified. To conclude, I have found a really cheap way to have insane gaming performance. And if you are insane uh -huh. money spender, Mr. Moneyflow, uh -huh. You can spend extra 5 euros and buy Xeon E5 1620 V2, which should deliver even better gaming experience. Thank you for staying up to the end. Since it's Christmas, I want to refresh my game library with more relevant games. So please comment which games I should buy and include in future gaming benchmarks. Stay cheap, my dudes. Cheap bastard out.